Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro and yet again we are talking about the latest Android 12 stable which is ported to this particular device or which is built from source. It's not exactly ported, it is built from source. I've been rocking this particular ROM since the last two to three days and I wanted to give you guys a complete review. That is the reason you guys see an NX camera over here, some games over here, which means a gaming review is also coming. But before we get into the complete review, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other, so join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. my name is Kailash, let's get going. Alright, so first things first, you saw the install video, you saw the initial impressions video and here is the complete review. So if you actually go to about and click on the Android version over here, you will see that this is Android version 12, no beta, nothing. So what you have here is Android 12, Google Play system update 12, October security patch and it comes with the perf kernel. Now I have used it for a couple of days with my secondary sim cards i've made and received calls tried things like whatsapp video calling and stuff you know stuff that you usually do and i will also show you in this video how to go ahead and get the safety net to pass and stuff like that because if you're planning to use this as a daily driver you will need things like anx camera for clicking pictures and the bugs that we have i will inform you about that so first things first what is the initial impression when you actually install this rom the ROM is really, really smooth in the long run, right? Everything works as expected. Now, there is something called as always on display, which is available on AMOLED or OLED powered screens. Now, whenever a custom ROM is installed on the K20 Pro, the fingerprint scanner, which is the under screen or, you know, the in screen FOD is a problem, but have a look over here. Now, sometimes what has been happening is, when always on display is there it doesn't really work that great but the moment you turn the screen on there you go so let's turn it off once again right so the fingerprint scanner it's not as bad as it was initially on custom roms 90 percent of the time it will work but if you have always on display then you might have some issues here and there and it's not really a problem because it, it works most of the time now the another striking thing or the striking feature of android 12 is the monet ui and for me it has been working really really well because i don't really have a lot of wallpapers over here so let's actually go ahead and see how well the monet color engine works so let's go to wallpapers images and say select this one and see if it turns purple so let's go ahead and download set wallpaper it doesn't look that great but that's fine there you go just have a look this whole theming colors has really really changed and these theming icons which are in beta have changed as well so that is something really really neat so basically your monet ui is working well now another thing that i found missing is the google feed over here to the left because if you actually go to the launcher settings you have double tap to sleep, you have add icons to home screen, you have allow home screen rotation notification dots, but you don't really have the option of having the Google feed to the left. So you have to access it using the app. But even if you access it using the app, it is really, really smooth. I mean, it is more smooth than it would be on a Poco X3 Pro with MIUI, you know, just to give you a gist of how laggy it is on the Poco X3 Pro. But all in all, the smoothness on this ROM is amazing. The app icon animations are really, really great. As you can see, even if you go to the multitasking menu, all the apps, everything works great. If you press and hold over here, you do have Google Play Store, the name of the app, app info, and you have split screen. So you can go ahead and use split screen and it works absolutely fine. So the multitasking menu, no issues at all. But something that I'm not seeing over here in Android 11, you had screenshot and, you know, select text and all those options in the multitasking menu. So that unfortunately I'm not able to see over here. But that doesn't stop us from recommending this ROM as a daily driver. Now let's come to the important aspect which you will use daily because this is a smartphone. The primary objective of a phone is to make calls. So let's go ahead and go to the dialer and let's dial 198. 
so calling is working absolutely fine i've not had any issues with calling text messages using whatsapp all the social media applications and stuff and when you boot into this rom it actually boots with very very few applications so which means it doesn't really have a lot of bloatware now we do have accu battery installed you do see that it it has 11 hours and 38 minutes so it easily gets you through a day I've not really had any problems with charging. So let's go ahead and have a look at Accu battery as well. So if you talk about charging, you have this charge alarm option and stuff. As you can see, 59% in one hour. So it does take a little longer than it would usually on a 27 watt charger, but it charges just fine. Say 10, 20 minutes here and there and it's okay. And I did not experience the device overheating as well. And as far as the battery backup is concerned, it's pretty decent. I do have a screenshot of the battery backup. Let me go ahead and show you that. Right. So as you can see over here, the charger was connected 13 hours back and it still says it has 13 hours left. We did have screen usage of around an hour and most of the times it was running these benchmark numbers and everything else. So all in all, the battery life is decent and the charging speeds are also pretty okay. So you don't really have any problems there. What about the camera application? Now this ROM doesn't really come with a camera application. So you have to install a NX camera for which of course you need Magisk. So before moving to the camera, we will actually go to Magisk over here because in order to get safety net to pass. So if you look over here, if you go to the play store, right and if you check the play store certification settings about not certified right so let's go ahead and maybe close all the applications and let's go to magisk over here real quick there you go now in magisk you need to go to magisk settings enable magisk hide go here select this option now usually what i do is I select all the Google applications and I hide Magisk for all of them. So let's go to Google over here, right? So one by one, I'll select all of them. There you go. Now the main apps to hide Magisk from is the Google Play Store, the Google Play Services, Google Pay, all your banking applications. You need to hide Magisk from all of them. So there you have it, right? So once you've hidden all of them, you can go back, go back again, and then go to settings and select this option called hide Magisk app. Now over here, I usually refer this to this as a settings new name. Let's wait for it to hide itself. There you go. Once it restarts, it'll ask you if you want to create a shortcut, I'll say no. So let's go ahead and close this application, right? So in some time after you clear the data of the Play Store, it will show you device is certified. If not, then you can restart the phone. But if you actually have a look, I can go to Google Pay over here, right? And it would not give me any error message. So, so basically that is the way to hide Magisk. And there is another thing for which you need Magisk that is ANX camera. And I'll tell you the modules that I have installed over here. So the remember we renamed Magisk to settings new. So if you look over here, you need MIUI core and you I'm using 190R. So if you see over here, it works just fine, but the portrait mode doesn't really work. Front camera, back camera portrait is not working. But apart from that, you know, the normal photo, wide angle, 2x zoom, everything works great. The front camera selfie pops up just fine, as you can see over here. So yeah. The camera with the NX camera works, video recording works, just the 48 megapixel mode and the normal portrait mode for the front and rear camera doesn't work. Now, you would ask me, charging is okay, everything else is okay, how battery life is okay and you know, most of, there are no crashes, nothing else and you can definitely use this as a daily driver. So, what about the performance? Now, in order to check the performance, I did run two different kernels, the one which is pre-included with this ROM is the perf kernel. So let's have a look at the throttle test of perf kernel first, which is the default kernel. All right. So you see over here, it says CPU throttle to 92% of its max performance and the average performance was 186, 393 GIPS, right? That is with the stock kernel and with not kernel, 87% throttling, but the performance increased, right? Now let's have a look at the Geekbench numbers and Antutu numbers. This is with the Perf kernel, which is 716 single core, 2437 multi-core, 
and with not kernel 743 and 2452 so similar performance with the perf kernel 523 124 and with not kernel 526 482 so not kernel on this particular rom performs a little better and while not kernel was installed i didn't really have any major major issues with this particular rom so yeah not kernel is something based on mii vendor and it works fine and you can go ahead and try it now before we end the video let's talk about the bugs or you know the issues that i faced i've had one or two instances wherein the phone completely froze on me i had to press and hold the power button to get the phone to hard reboot that is one instance and secondly in extremely low light while always on display is enabled the fingerprint scanner sometimes refuses to work now apart from these two issues i did not have any major problems i can safely recommend this to be used as a daily driver on your phone especially considering the fact that you have stable android 12 that is the latest version of android 12 which is going to stay installed on your device let me know in the comment section what do you think about this rom in this review the gaming review is coming for this particular rom as well until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care goodbye